Thank you. So uh, before we start the final session, this is the session with stakeholders. So final uh, session is what achievement and what will be the new research target for the control of the fastidiosa discussion with stakeholders. You cannot hear anything? There's no audio? Can I ask you silence, please? Can everybody sit down, please? Thank you. Okay. So this is the final session of the conference. Can you hear me now? Uh, this session uh, will be about the feedback from stakeholders, or what are the achievements of the research results presented today, and what will be for them uh, the need for the next research targets. But before we start this session, we have the pleasure to welcome here Monsieur Gilles Simeoni, le président de l'exécutif de la collective de course, who, who want to give to this conference a, a, a small welcome. Uh, he couldn't come on Monday. Uh, we had the president of the Office de l'Environnement de Course on Monday, but uh, he was, we are very happy this year to give a, a greetings to all the scientists in this conference. Monsieur? So, uh, good afternoon. I first, I would like to thank you to give me the possibility to see all these very important people. I would like to say to you that we are very happy, very proud to welcome you in Ajaccio, in Corsica, uh, people and scientists from all over the world. I would like to apologize. I had to be there yesterday, but uh, I couldn't do it. So uh, I hope your, your work has been very efficient. I'm sure of that. Uh, I would like to say that um, it's a question very important, not only for Corsican or Mediterranean area or Europe, but uh, for the world, for the world, for our world, for we know that world is uh, already, is now a, a village. But uh, we have to, to link the research and the politics. It's very important. So I would like to, to tell you, maybe in French, if you, if I can do it, uh, que la Corse, que j'ai l'honneur de représenter ici, uh, croit beaucoup uh, au projet méditerranéen de façon générale. Donc la Corse croit beaucoup au projet méditerranéen, au projet culturel, politique, économique, social et environnemental méditerranéen. So the Corsica, can you hear me? No? Uh, so the uh, Corsica really believe to the Mediterranean uh, project and to the uh, believe in the environmental uh, uh, values of the Mediterranean. Uh, and Corsica is very involved in the cooperation between uh, north and south of Mediterranean mm -hmm. and between the island of Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's better than my French. <laughs> Uh, et que nous savons aussi que derrière uh, la question scientifique de la Xile, là, il y a des enjeux économiques extrêmement importants. So, and we know that uh, um, beyond the scientific aspect of Xile, there are very important uh, economic aspects. Donc, uh, cette question précise est en fait uh, le résumé de la coopération internationale euro-méditerranéenne à mettre en œuvre dans tous les domaines. Uh. Sorry. So <laughs> this is more difficult. So, uh, so this is very important for the cooperation in the Mediterranean in all the area. <laughs> well, <Oui. laughs> <laughs> if you permit, I think that <laughs> this special problem <laughs> is a good way to problematize mm. uh, mm. in a global way mm. all the problems we can meet in uh, social, mm -hmm. economical, and political issues. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I can it say that. It is, it is in fact, true. We, we discussed okay. today. This so yeah. thank you very much. I go, I learn a little bit of English, and I come back uh, in a few hours. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye-bye. So, we thank you very much and for coming here. And uh, we're very pleased if you stay here for the, uh, to listen yes. to us. And if you have any other question, 
uh, when they read the debate. We will exactly. uh, Thank you very much. Thank Good you. work. And we expect for you uh, as often as you can and uh, as often as you want. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, now we start the session. And uh, we would like to invite Luke Peters, uh, he's the chair of the phytosanitary uh, question working group from Copacogeca, uh, the uh, European Farm and Agri Cooperative Association, to present us uh, the feedback from the point of view of the farmers and agri cooperative on the next research priority for the control of Xylella fastidiosa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, to, to contribute uh, to, this, uh, to this conference and to attend this conference as a bystander, as an observer. I uh, also would like to thank the other observers in the room uh, for their contribution uh, to, this, uh, uh, to this summary. Uh, also, thanks to, to Sarah for the, from the uh, EFSA Secretariat for the logistical support. The biggest difficulty uh, of this exercise was to, uh, to summarize two days uh, of intensive exchange of scientific work into 15 minutes, covering two questions. What are the key achievements of the research from our stakeholders' point of view? And secondly, what are the next research uh, priorities uh, that we would like to see in the near future? First of all, for those who don't know who COPA and COGICA are, there are two sister brother organizations, Brussels-based, uh, created in the late uh, 50s. COPA is the European Farmers Organization and uh, COGICA is the European Agri-Cooperative uh, Association. Uh, we cover a quite large, a quite large uh, membership uh, throughout uh, Europe and even beyond. And we also work for the uh, associated countries such as Norway, uh, Iceland and, uh, and Switzerland. Our mission is to ensure uh, an innovative, and that's what this conference is all about, uh, and also a, compet a competitive uh, European agriculture and agri-food uh, sector. Uh, guaranteeing food security for half uh, a billion people uh, throughout Europe. And we try to do that by uh, playing our role, uh, not only in the Brussels bubble, but in the global bubble, trying to influence uh, decision-making uh, process and also the public opinion. Coming to the content of uh, yesterday's and today's, uh, Listening to the conference and listening to the contribution of the scientists, one might if think one might think that Xylella has been amongst us for decades, even for ages. So I dig into some archives and I discovered that it was only 24th of April 2015, 2015, so four, four years ago that I had the pleasure to introduce this topic into the emerging risk stakeholder platform uh, of EFSA. So Xylella is not there for ages yet. I also discovered this morning that there is a big typo in the date, so I have to readjust it. I will do that uh, the next week. But this is the timing that we are facing uh, with Xylella. Looking to what I've heard today and yesterday is that over that short period of time, a lot of things are realized, that a lot of results are presented, are brought forward to this conference. And we also know, as a general consideration already said by the previous uh, speaker, uh, that the, the, the Xylera emergency involves the European society and not only the European society in a variety of aspects. Um, making the agriculture component not the only one deeply affected by this situation. These outbreaks also impact the societal networks 
the political decision-making, the environmental, but also the historical compartments and the cultural identities. And in those areas where we have the most out outbreaks of the most severity of the, uh, of the xylella uh, within the European atmosphere, all of these components are just part of one society of people living, working in the countryside, having their heritage there and also want to have their future there. So therefore, we think from observers' perspective, not only from farmers, but from observers' perspective, that actions should be com combined, that there is a need to combine actions to the future. And maybe uh, some farmers, some end users, have been involved in the, in the, in the main Xylella project. I have to say that I, have to, I had to wait till only two hours ago that Mr. Bossia, coordinator of Ponte, Ponte, explicitly mentioned the involvement of the farmers, of the end users, of the people living in the countryside. I can uh, come back to that uh, uh, later in the more specific conclusion. What do we retain as key achievements of the research? And that's very difficult. Listening to, to dozens and dozens of, of uh, contributions, uh, but we might say that the richness and the diversity of the scientific expertise um, involved in this xylella issue increased in a very short time. It's amazing what it's been achieved over the past, let's say, five years. And most of the presented results, and that's, that's very, very positive, what I wanted to say now, most, not all of them, but most of the presented results were understandable, even from an outsider as I. The impossibility to eradicate, but the possibility to confuse and to restrict the growth of xylella is one of the positive elements I want to retain. But also, somebody said, Mr. San Sallarelli said, resistance is not impossible. And these are two of the plenty uh, positive uh, things I want to take with me uh, from these two days event. Many achievements and new methodologies uh, were shown. Uh, not clear yet if and how many of them are gen generally uh, suitable uh, for the xylella species, but it was also uh, an observation of myself that how many different uh, specialities in the scientific world try to be involved in this major problem. What do we think as, a, as external observers are the priorities uh, for the next research ag agenda. We know that, all we know that we are going from Horizon 2020 into Horizon Europe and, and another uh, uh, bunch of possibilities will be opened in the, in the, in the uh, near future. But I, we think that it is crucial to be able to transfer the acquired uh, knowledge to the other compartments of society. Farmers in the first place, because of the reason I explained. The farmers involved in those areas are also taking care of the heritage and the social uh, life in those areas. So how we can acquire, uh, how we can transfer the acquired knowledge uh, to those end users, to those people directly involved. To do so, I think it's very important to have an integration of all the technologies and the acquired knowledge and experience. It, we listen to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to results coming from far above, from satellite, into the deepest soul of the xylella bacteria, going from the nano uh, level up to the high in the sky level. Well, what we try to have to look for is to have an integration of all these things and looking to what each other's and somebody else's speciality can bring into our own speciality and try to build on that one. There is another important remark I want to make and it's, be it's below on the screen for all the day. 
I, I, you notice that they write xylella two ways. Hey, they do it with a Y and they do it with an I. That depends on the, on, on the intention and the hour of the day. But how research can support solution that remains the same throughout the day? But I think, and I think, and uh, we as an observer think that from now on, from today on, we should move from a passive way of action, the support of something, to a more active role by proposing and promoting and bringing practical solution into the real world. So excuse me if I say that supporting is a little bit too non-active to me and that passive to me and that we should shift to a more active role and I'm sure that research, uh, uh, research uh, community can do so. I already mentioned Horizon 2020 and uh, Horizon uh, Europe. So multi-actor approach in that is extremely uh, positive and extremely needed. From now on, I think, and it's, as, as I said, it was mentioned in the, in the, uh, uh, the, the presentation of, Mr. of the coordinator of, uh, of Ponte, Mr. Rossia, that we need to have a more uh, uh, active role uh, for for uh, the end users, for the growers, and for the people living in the countryside. Even in the conceptual phase of your work, multi-actor approach to me is not only asking midway a research program to a farmer or to a bystander, what are you thinking of this, what we have been doing, or what do you think of that, what we are going to do? No. If you want to have a multi-actor approach, a collaboration with those people, you need to involve them from the conceptual phase at once. They know their trees as they know their cattle. They know their environment. They know the, the facilities they are working with and living in. So ask their opinion. Uh, there was a nice discussion going on. Is it not too dry? Is it not too wet? Is, uh, it was in the in the contribution of Israel, I think, uh, that, well, this is, this is what growers can tell you. This is what people from the countryside can tell you. So let me put it this way. The empiric experience from the real world should be taken on board. Concluding remark. I still have three minutes and eight, uh, 17 seconds. <laughs> so concluding remarks. First of all, thank you very much for the important achievement presented during this conference. And also to give the opportunity to the farmers and the bystanders and the stakeholders to raise their voice. Another typo over there. Till now, Xylella was the tool for researchers to improve expertise and skill in their work domain. I think from now on, it should be time that the achieved ex expertise should become the tool to fight Xylella in the field together with the farmers. And be aware of this, the end users, e.g. the farmers, we are ready to contribute. Thank you very much. So I ask uh, uh, Luke Peter to stay on uh, on, uh, on board, on the uh, to stay here, and uh, the chair of the scientific session to also come um, come here for the discussion for this session. So all the chair of the scientific session, please come. Also. And I think it would be nice to still see the screen for the presentation. Possible still to see the last slides of the presentation from Luke Peters? Thank you very much. So uh, I think uh, we could really start. Uh, it was very nice 
to have the appreciation of the achievement. I don't know if maybe the, uh, the chair of the session would like to comment on some of the achievement uh, from the presentation from, uh, from Luke. Resistance is not impossible, impossible to eradicate, possible to confuse, restrict its growth. Uh, many achievements, new methodology. Uh, so uh, do you have any comments on the achievement? Do you agree with this achievement from the results of this conference? Maria? Yeah, as coordinator of the project uh, X Factors and also uh, part of the project Ponte, uh, we, we really appreciate the, the comments uh, of Dr. Peters uh, and uh, his, uh, his remarking about having a farm on board. Uh, as he was saying, uh, our experience in Apulia uh, showed that some of, of our research line uh, took the ideas from, uh, from the growers. Some of the projects that uh, we mentioned before uh, were stimulated uh, by the growers. Uh, on the other hand, I have to say that uh, the multi-actor uh, uh, project is an obligation uh, from the, the European Commission. We, we have to ensure uh, the multi-actor uh, approach. And uh, sometimes, uh, uh, in the case of Xylella, since the problem was very uh, sensitive and the growers were uh, touched by the problem, it was not... Uh, uh, difficult to have uh, growers on board, but in other cases it is not uh, easy to have the active role. Sometimes uh, we have to uh, uh, almost stalk them to, to be on board because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, a need to, to, to have uh, this. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I can say as coordinator of, of, the, of the project that uh, we have uh, 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 as uh, also uh, he, he remarked that Xilal has been uh, not only uh, 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 like a, a gym for us, for the researcher to, to train and to improve uh, ourselves, but also to uh, set some uh, good networks at European level, not only between uh, researcher, but uh, also uh, with the stakeholders. And uh, I, I fully agree with the, the two points raised uh, uh, for the control of the bacterium related to, uh, both with sustainable and long-term uh, control strategies. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, the, the resistance is one of the, the research line that we, we hope to continue in the future because uh, it's something that can ensure sustainability to the um, uh, crops and, uh, um, uh, and uh, ensure uh, uh, yield to the, the growers. Maybe it's possible to explain in Ponte in these factors how you transfer uh, the information to the stakeholders and uh, how you interact with the stakeholders, how the stakeholders are on board in your projects, briefly. Yeah, yeah uh, the, the, main, uh, the main group of stakeholders that have been uh, involved, of course, are uh, in first place the phytosanitary authorities. We have made uh, several uh, um, training uh, and uh, seminar technical uh, visit in the area to train for uh, uh, symptoms, uh, uh, recon uh, recognition, and uh, uh, for uh, uh, surveillance and controls. Uh, but also, um, we have uh, done several uh, uh, on-site visits to growers coming from other countries to raise awareness about what uh, uh, xylella can cause once uh, it enters in a country and it, find, uh, it finds uh, um, good, uh, uh, favorable uh, conditions. Uh, several of our, uh, uh, several of the researchers, uh, members of the consortium, have attended hundreds of uh, seminars uh, organized by the stakeholders. So uh, uh, we have uh, contributed actively uh, to, to their um, uh, um, mission. Uh, and so they, they have been actively involved in the dissemination in, in this sense uh, as well. Thank you. And maybe Rodrigo can tell us more about how the research is integrated with the feedback from stakeholders, the input from stakeholders from farmers in California for Xylella or, or Rodrigo Krugner. This, or, or Ada, both. I'd like to make a different comment, if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
I was really impressed with the amount of research and knowledge that was generated in the last few years uh, here in Europe. I was contacted by Maria a long time ago, well, 2013, 2014, she came uh, asking for help with this xylella fastidiosa. She went to Brazil asking for help as well. I'm gonna make a prediction here that pretty soon we're gonna be coming asking for help for you guys because it's how, how fast research has evolved uh, here in Europe. I think that's my uh, one prediction that I can make. Comment about the stakeholders? All right, I'll, 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 I'll take the question. <laughs> Um, so, in, in California, particularly at the university level, we do we have three layers uh, of, of, way of ways of translating research. Uh, one is at university professors, people like Steve and I, we tend to do the research and then you have what we call extension specialists that do more applied research in some ways. And then you have what we call farm advisors who are people in, in counties. So they are those people who are the specialists for one particular location. And, um, and I th I'm not going to speak for Steve, but it's a very similar situation. For example, I work very closely with the farm advisor in, in Napa, which is the main grape growing area in California. And the same way uh, she has concerns that she hears from the farmers, uh, and we develop research projects that, that are academically interesting, so my students can, can graduate and get a job, but at the same time, uh, solve the problems that she thinks are very important for the farmers themselves. So we have this, this, this very significant and interactive process where the research is um, not necessarily all of it, but the questions being addressed uh, are imme of immediate concern to the farmers and the research is framed in such a way that um, once the project is finished, the farm advisor can go in front of an audience like this, or I can go in front of an audience like this and explain the research, it has an immediate impact. Um, so not everybody necessarily does that, but most of us in the University of California system who do work with, with agriculture tend to have this back and forth, not, not necessarily with farmers, but with farmers as well, but we have this connection with, with people who are there to translate the research into actionable items um, uh, uh, at the moment. So there is this immediate connection, and more recently, uh, particularly for Zalala, there has been a lot of interest in, in framing research questions from the farmers. They are the ones bringing the research questions, and we are doing the work to address those research questions. Um, I see Steve nodding, which means he probably agrees. So, uh, in fact, that's what we observe also in the epidemics in Apulia, where the researcher from uh, CNR University, they work very intensively day and night since 2013 to solve the problem one by one. So, find out what was the cause of the epidemics, uh, find out if they were uh, also in collaboration with farmers, who were doing also first observation, uh, if they were tolerant uh, olive varieties, resistant olive varieties, and uh, work in the field uh, with also the other institutions, CM, the, um, the other research institutes, to try to find for solutions. So that's also what we yeah. appreciate in this. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just make a comment at the very last point that you made on uh, the passive versus more uh, actionable items. Um, I think that ultimately, um, California has, been, has spent a lot of money during the last 20 years to work with a problem that's over 100 years old and we still have no solution. Um, and I think what's important is to keep in mind that while uh, there's a lot of interest in working with farmers and addressing these uh, uh, very important questions today, uh, that there, is, there has to be a balance between um, um, things that the farmer can understand and use today and things that are being developed in, in, in research that will potentially be used 10 years from today. So you, there, you need to have a balance between uh, more fundamental and also more applied science. It, that will always have to be there. Yeah, it's basically putting out the bushfire with the short-term research, and then there's the long-term research, for example, resistant varieties that take years, decades to, to develop. So maintaining uh, research throughout that process is important. 
Because if you stop, then you have to restart again later. It was not my remark to phase out one for the other. My remark was to have a balance in, in, in between those different types of research. Just one addition to what Maria said about the multi-actor approach of uh, X factors. Um, Camille has presented uh, at the start of this afternoon uh, the VSPP, and this was really an exercise where we had um, a nurseryman. So I don't want to preempt what you're going to say, Joseph, but uh, I think it was a good example where we had around the table uh, researchers, uh, nurserymen and uh, also some, uh, some representatives of NPPOs. So it was really a, a good um, mix of people and we really had good exchanges and we also had some exchanges on that with uh, Copa Cogeca. So, uh, I mean, that's a way of illustrating what has been done during the project, trying to work all together. Thank and you. by the way, now ball is in your, can in your side, so we want the growers to tell us back <laughs> what they think about what has been jointly established. And this is uh, really what we, we want now, <coughs> is that it comes to life. So I would like to ask now uh, Joseph Page from the Nursery Stock, European Nursery Stock Association to join us and to give his presentation because maybe some of the questions will be similar or different. So let's see. <laughs> Next presentation. Well, I can start. Yeah. The second presentation, please. Thank you. Hello, I can start. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm pretty sure bacteria has no emotions, but I am going to talk about feelings and emotions. Because growers involved in the production of Shilela host plants have many. Mm. Thank you. The indifference felt by growers far from infected countries, the fear when the authorities take a suspicious sample the satisfaction when the analysis of a suspicious sample turns negative, the frustration when the authorities inform about the applicable legislation if it turns positive, the misery when the nursery is blocked and there is not enough help from the government, the disappointment when nurseries in an affected country have difficulties to export to other countries, the greed or the envy of growers in non-affected countries trying to take the business from other growers. I'm sure all of you who are working with growers have detected and suffered the consequences of these and many more emotions. The affected growers are always shocked. Why me? As in, why do I have cancer? Many professionals don't understand why there is no cure for Chilela but there is no cure for cancer and many other human diseases either, although there are hundreds more scientists and medical doctors working on cancers than on Shilela. We are very grateful to Ponte for bringing me here and grateful to EFSA for giving us the opportunity to speak here today. Each time I attend a European conference, a Ponte or X Factors project meeting, you give us hope. And we hope that one day, sooner than later, we'll be able to cope with this disease because we have seen the advances you have shown through this conference. There are more than 27,000 nurses in Europe and more than 230,000 workers in European nurses that have faith in you. I'd like to remind you about the variability in nursery business. The nursery sector is not only a small almond trees or small olive trees grown in a, in a greenhouse. The, there are thousands, literally thousands of varieties and species grown in different 
places and different areas and different types of production. This is a reused slide, we have to reuse, used, I, I prepared for Palma two years ago. And I think we have a, make a great achievement on detection of the disease. However, we are going to, through each session, to give our point of view. The opening session, uh, we heard about the Ponte project achievement, and we, all, all we can say is thank you very much to Ponte leaders and Ponte, and Ponte partners. From, in one year, they took the Silela research from zero to a cruising speed, and after three years, we can say that it's the mother stock of all Shilala projects in Europe. In this opening session, we also see promis promising advances in molecular studies that lead to transgenic varieties that could in the food to give us hope for the future. And we also heard about the biological control with a, an easy to apply treatment. So this is something we have to look for in many years. Regarding biology and pathogenicity, well, we are beginning to understand the complex of epidemiology that is different in each environment, in each situation. And through genomics, we have done an incredibly good job, a forensic job, to understand where Shilala comes from and to understand the present, the current situation. But as was said, we are still at the, at the very tip of the iceberg and research needs to address this complexity. We need more research in genetics, in climate, in geography, and especially from our point of view to include more species and more varieties in the, in the research. We would like also to suggest to go out from the lab and go to the field to test resistance in field conditions. Unfortunately, we are now having some places where, you know, that are infected. And we would like to propose to create a Silela Gardens network in Mallorca, in Puglia, in Corsica, with as much number of species possible to look, well, to, to use them as sentinel plants, to detect them and to know if they are uh, susceptible or not. I don't know, we, we heard about the recombination risk. Uh, it could happen that we create a nuclear bomb there, but. Well, you are the specialist and you are going to assist us in this idea. Regarding vectors, we have new knowledge of the vector's presence and behavior, but from a nurse's point of view, we'd like to spread these studies on more plant species. And also from our point of view, we'd like to ensure that there are no other vector species that uh, we are very familiar with Philaenus, with Neophilaenus, but we have to prevent other species that could be there in the nurseries. And it was not mentioned, or small, almost not mentioned, uh, and we need tools against the vectors. And we lack the availability of plant protection products uh, authorized in many countries to control the vectors. Regarding detection, well, this, uh, it's amazing the inventory of detection techniques uh, you made. But we need a GPS to help us finding the good way on choosing the detection method in each case. We also need to improve the sampling techniques in the field. It, you have to prevent the garbage in and garbage out in the laboratory. And from our point of view, we must be sure that when in a nursery enters, the plant is completely healthy. So we need new de technologies to lower the detection level, especially on asymptomatic plants. And the latency. We need to know more about latency. Each time a nursery introduces a new plant in the uh, a nursery man introduces a new plant in the nursery, he feels like having a, a time bomb in there. Regarding, well, modeling, uh, you have good, uh, made a great job, and we think that it will al allow risk-based surveillance in the different phytosanitary scenarios. And the uh, Clixmax model 
it was also very good, and we demand or we ask for adapting the climax model to the nurseries conditions and, and nurseries spe species, and also to adapt the genetic models to predict local situations. That could be helpful, for example, when you are placing a new nursery or when you are moving one nursery from another place to prevent location in a high risk place. We have much more new information from the new outbreaks or, and from analysis, and we are very happy to hear that pest risk analyses are continuously updated. From our, from scientists from the social areas, we have seen that Homo sapiens is also a heavily affected species of this disease. And I was happy to hear that street, park, and wild trees were also mentioned. Uh, it was mentioned that to move to resistant cultivars, it was recently said that we, we to keep to production in a 50 years term, we have to uh, produce resistant varieties, but it's a long-term goal, but we have to start obtention and breeding programs. And we should in, with vocate to include uh, environment and urban areas in the research, not only in the inspections. And we would like also to have uh, a categorized host plants database, including varieties, to help making production decisions. If we know through, well, several criteria that some species of varieties are high risk, some nurses can decide to produce other lower risk plants, and it would help to reduce the impact of the disease in the future. Regarding surveillance, also, again, ornamental plants and forest and environment was mentioned. And also in the EFSA toolkit was mentioned and they took into account uh, human actions in the long distance dispersal. So we asked to adapt this, it's not probably the research, but the surveillance techniques to each combination of production and place conditions. And we ask also to develop optimized diagnostic tools to prevent the entrance of Xylella from third countries. There are some, one mentioned that there are 60 different points of entrance in Italy. So we need something that is useful to, to prevent and to, to detect and to prevent the introduction of Xylella. About sustainable control measures, well, the BSPP was uh, a great achievement after two years of uh, long discussions. Uh, we have seen also promising results of the olive cultivars screen in Italy and many different techniques to increase resistance that seem uh, interesting for the future. But we also need to research to find an alternative to insect proof facilities, for example, for vitis or for large ornamental plants that are not, not able to be grown inside a greenhouse or um, confined environment. And we ask for well, more testing, more cultivars, more species. And I haven't heard anything about the studies on heat tra treatment on plant propagation material. This is something we should go, go on also. And finally, I'd like to thank the contributors, Pepinier uh, Lugmenier, a nurseryman, a colleague here in Corsica, Eduardo Schutti from Anve in Italy, Marco Cardoni and Luigi Catalano from Chivi, Italy, Carlos Lucia from Viveros Villanueva in Spain for all their ideas, and also Sibren Bosch for EFSA for collecting them all. And on behalf of the European sector, uh, sector of nurseries, I'd like to thank you all for your research, and personally thank you very much for your attention. Podium here, and uh, now I think we can discuss a bit the um, the target and the achievement that were presented by Joseph. So I have a question to the researcher: Is uh, thermotherapy treatment on dormant plant material is very effective? Has been proven in grapes, has been proven in uh, I think in UK, in US also on pecan walnut. Uh, is used in Europe for uh, Flavescens doré. Yeah. But why nobody study on other dormant, uh, sp another species of uh, uh, perennial plants? 
what is the reason why it is not a standard to other species? What do you think? Um, what, what, about, what about almond trees, for example? Olive trees? Is there knowledge about uh, this technique on these plants? Probably are not, it's not possible on olive trees because uh, it's evergreen. I don't know. Another question is to the chair of the scientific session. They can also ask help from the public if they want. Why nobody studied thermotherapy on other species than grapes and pecan walnuts? There's no publication. <laughs> I would like to bring up the fact that you are the chair of this session. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that it's more out of uh, need, right? Um, in, in, in California, for example, we don't have much of a need for um, thermotherapy of almond plants for planting uh, because of xylella. It's, it's just, I mean, there are so many researchers and there are different needs from the almond industry. And, it's just not that much of a problem. Um, if it were a big problem, people would, would, would look in, into it in more details. Uh, Rodrigo has been working more with almonds. I'm not sure you want to add anything to it, but you know there are only so many of us, and different industries have different priorities. And uh, as far as I can tell, for the almond industry, it has never really been a priority. I think it has to do with the size of the industry, exporting plant material and importing plant material. There are very few individuals compared to growers that are being affected by the disease in the field. So most of the effort and the research goes to farms, trying to solve the disease and the problems in the farms. I really think we do need to investigate more the heat treatment. Uh, and also I'm going to throw the idea of a cold treatment. I've been talking to some people here. Zalela is uh, susceptible to cold temperatures. Sometimes the uh, propagated material is stored in the, under cold temperatures for long periods. I have no idea. For example, almonds, uh, almond plants are stored for months in the facility. So I don't know if that period can clear Zalela 100%. And that's the other problem. Once you're doing heat treatment or cold treatment, that requires 100% effective uh, treatment. Because if you have a 98% effectiveness, uh, you cannot certify that plant material has been clean from the from the pathogen. So there's a lot of research that needs to be done to show that it's 100% uh, effective. So any other comment on the proposal from uh, the nursery point of view? They were shown the screen before. So uh, uh, research for resistance. Then we have the. Um, uh, what's the alternative to insect proof greenhouse for, uh, for big plants? Uh, to summarize, maybe. Well, uh, and wha what about uh, studying the disease in the, in the forest? How can uh, affect the Mediterranean environment? And for this, this is the reason to propose to create uh, arboreta or gardens, sent sentinel plants in. in in these areas to, to have more knowledge of the, all the speci species that uh, we have in Europe. Is it possible? I have seen the project Pontes Factors, uh, also with other small projects before. Uh, I know in Apulia you did something. There are fields where you test variety, but what is the, what is the difficulty to make a step forward uh, to have very large plots with many different species in, uh, uh, in Apulia, in Corsica, in Balearic Island. What, is, uh, what do we need to have a step forward? I, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, I think it would be great. You just need the money to do it. Um, there is no reason not to do it. Uh, in California, we have what we call sentinel chicken for, for flu and other human viruses. You just have this chicken in different parts of the state, and, and people keep them, and then the state comes and tests the, 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 the birds to see you know, if they were infected with different viruses. Um, this is exactly the same idea. It's a great idea. Um, maybe the nursery industry should support it. I, I, I think uh, we can supply the plants. <laughs> Any more comments on this aspect, another aspect, also from the public? Someone has some idea why, I mean, Funding is very important. 
we found the plants already. I'm Federico Lanotte from CNR, from Bari. Uh, uh, I would say something uh, that is connected with the priority for the nursery. Uh, of course, they, did it to, they need to have more information about the susceptibility of different species and different variety. The same is, uh, for example, for the area of Salento, where we have to think to reconstruct the agriculture. We, do, we lack of information in uh, what could be alternative crops uh, for that area, because uh, of course we couldn't, uh, for example, make the same mistake to have uh, genetic uniformity, even if with resistant uh, few, at the moment, uh, olive variety. So I think that uh, more effort should, or uh, new priority, because at the moment, of course, we should uh, face the most important priorities. But in the coming years, probably other uh, priority we should uh, uh, add to the to the research. Joao, Joao. In fact, Brazil was the yeah. country where one of the major problems for citrus variegated chlorosi was yeah. solved by the uh, health plant propagation material. Yeah. I, 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 what I would complement is that uh, for this bacteria that uh, you don't have like. Uh, a completely resistant uh, solution uh, in terms of resistance. You don't have a completely efficient uh, curative measure. So you have to uh, act with uh, preventive methods of control. And they usually are not 100% efficient. They are 30%, 40%, 50%. So you have to combine a lot of things. Maybe con con uh, concerning the question uh, about uh, this uh, nursery stock. So if you don't have uh, resistant material, uh, it's not so easy to clean in many cases. I, I, and, you, and also you have to think about the epidemiology. Uh, uh, if you have secondary spread in the field and you start with a plant that is infected or that may be infected, uh, the, 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 that plant will be a source of uh, inoculum. So for citrus, uh, with the experience in Brazil, for example, where the situation appears to be similar to olive here, you have a secondary spread, you don't have complete resistance, uh, it's really important to produce, uh, to get um, uh, clean material, certify and produce every, every, everything inside uh, the nursery. So I, I don't see in, in, this, in the near future, uh, until you have a complete, uh, very efficient method of control, uh, how to get rid of this protection in the short term or in medium. I'd like to add that uh, in Brazil, also, there was a requirement to change the, le the legislation on how nurserymen produce the plants as opposed to outdoors. And so, they, so they moved everything to indoors uh, production. I know that we're not talking about laws here, but that was something that actually made a difference there as well. Right? This is obviously possible and, and it's a good advice for plant propagation material, but it's not possible for uh, five meters trees. So we, we have to adapt to each situation, to each uh, type of production. It makes sense on propagation of fruit trees or vitis or, well, uh, orange seed trees. Uh. What I can tell, maybe Yovesu can, say, people from Centro de Citricultura can say, is that uh, it was not easy for the, for the people who produce the nursery trees to adapt to this system too. They have to develop new ways to produce the plants and inside these screen houses. So it takes some time to, to develop the system. And I don't know if your vessel can comment some on that. There, there, are, there are many nurseries in Southern Europe that are adapting to, to produce uh, citrus in closed environment because there is a, it's also a, a requirement by the regulation if you want to produce in a, in a demarcated area. So there are some nurseries that are adapting in advance before the arrival of the chilella to have the, the, the greenhouses prepared to just in case. So nurseries are working in this way.
so there were other aspects in the presentation. So uh, I think it's, I cannot show it back to the screen, I think, now, but I think also the, uh, the issue of control, not 100% efficient, but it's quite interesting that we start to see something can work partially. So different methods together could be combined. So should we have a, a research line on integration of different methods? So, and as you can see, stay in tolerant varieties, uh, interact, uh, control, as I said before in the, in the last uh, session. Is that one, something we should prioritize now? And how easy is to do it? This kind of experiment in the field also, because you need the inoculum. And so you need very large plots, many repetition, hoping that they get infected and you can get the, the result. It's not that easy. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I've, I've been involved in this for a long time now. Uh, I think that th th it requires a change in mindset. I think um, in Europe, for the most part, everyone is in the mindset of quarantine or containment. And um, the research is all in that direction. Uh, you can't even work with the pathogens uh, in many cases, even if the pathogen is, you know, 10 kilometers from your lab. Um, I think you need to change the mindset and you have to move away from this idea that there will be nothing green left in Europe to let's try to control it, contain it, manage it. Um, not, not everywhere, I think you still need a quarantine and, and, and you know, different efforts, but some places you should move away from that and get into the, accept the idea that you're gonna live with it and learn how to live with it, which is what you're talking about. Um, but I think that that requires, it's not that people here don't know how to do it. Uh, I think everyone here would be very eager to start working from that perspective, uh, at least most people. Uh, but it requires political will to change it, to go from one to the other. Anybody from the public would like to comment? Or to uh, um, a couple of uh, comments. First for the Dr. Peters. You mentioned in the last slide that uh, farmers are ready for contribute to the new uh, research activity. Can I ask you what kind of contribution can we expect from farmers? And, and also to Mr. Pages, uh, you also mentioned the importance of, the, of breeding, of starting breeding for resistance to Silela. Uh, I work in breeding, I work in olive breeding, and we are ready to start uh, working on breeding. But, uh, but you know that the breeding, fruit breeding, is a long task, so we need uh, a lot of support, a lot of funding. So the question is, uh, are the nurseries or the farmers uh, mm, ready for investing in breeding? What you can expect from farmers in the first place is knowledge. Most of the time they are very smart people. But you, ask them, you have to ask them sensitive, sensible questions. And they will, they will bring whatever they know on the table. That's, that's my understanding. That's how I work, or we work with farmers. i give you one example. We, as a cooperative, I'm, I'm in the Kajika part of Cope Kajika. Within the cooperative, we have uh, four research facilities. And whatever is done in the research facility is discussed before with farmers. And farmers will provide the money, yes or no. And the money will come from the farmers first, and then from public authority and not the other way around. Because most of the time, one can convince public authority to put money on the table and then ask contribution to the farmer, five, 10 to 20%. That's not the way to do it. Go to the farmers first, discuss with them, ask them what money they want to put on the table, and then you go to the public authority and try to find one man or woman in public authority who will ignore the wish and the willingness to pay for that research from the farmers. That's how you talk to farmers. You don't go to farmers and say, I want to research this, can you pay for it? No. Go to them and ask, what kind of research are you willing to help with your knowledge? 
and if needed, even partially pay for it. So it's the other way around. It's not top down. We have to work bottom up. And that's what farmers can add to your research. And regarding nurseries, uh, in our organization we have well, growers of thousands of different species, but we can help putting in contact the growers of or the, or the, the propagators or the nurseries of certain species with the uh, scientists that are breeding or that are interested in breeding these, these species. And of course, th there is a, an economical implication of the breeders, oh, sorry, of the nurseries. They are interested, they are going to pay. And in fact, there are some initiatives already uh, starting. If I may come back to the remark from the United States, that's where I make the difference in contribution from the farmers. If you cannot ask a farmer to invest in long-term, high-level research. That, that's not where his heart is. But if you can, can ask him to contribute in a, in a small to mid, even mid-term solution to whatever, that's where you will find the contribution. So I'm not aiming at the, at the very high end. That, that's, that's societal responsibility. But where the income from the farmers lies, he's willing to contribute. Um, I agree 100%. Most of our research money comes from farmers. And, and regard, regard, regarding nurseries, uh, if the nursery has a return of the investment in a long term with the new variety, mm, they can invest now. Uh, Giuseppe, just, uh, just a comment uh, uh, on your uh, um, uh, statement about integrating uh, approach. Uh, yes, th this is also what uh, came out from uh, our uh, uh, activity in the project. Of course, in a limited uh, time, we could not integrate different parameters because we would have a lot of variable to test. So we start uh, one by one, but uh, this show that uh, they can be effective uh, at for a certain level, maybe the integration of uh, some uh, tools can uh, provide a, a, a better uh, um, counteraction, counteract uh, better the, the effect of the bacterium, but this requires a, a long term uh, research and most of them, as Rodrigo was saying, must be done uh, under field conditions, so uh, requiring more uh, long term investment. Please. Uh, microphone. Uh, there's one already there. Yeah. And then pass so the my question is, uh, th thank you for this panel. I think it's, it's quite essential. Uh, having some done some research on uh, stakeholders, here we have particularly uh, farming and nursery stakeholders. I, I was thinking that, as we know, Xilola doesn't know frontiers, but also doesn't m care much about uh, which stakeholders she <laughs> has to deal with. So my question is particularly, how would you do, as stakeholders specifically to nursery and farming, how, how would you do to also take care of the issues that would be carried out by other type of stakeholders, those from cultural heritage, those from particularly uh, well-known era, here there are some that could be also affected by Zilela or outbreaks, and other types of concern that you would share because the biology uh, is a, a driver for, for, for that commitment with other types of actors, meaning those that would not be necessarily only connected to the agricultural sectors. If your question translates in uh, how far can second pillar help us in to solve that problem of heritage and social, uh, well, my, my answer is rather blunt, it can't. Second pillar is designed for something else. You cannot ask farmer to pay for everything. So there has to, for the societal and for the historical and for the whatever, it has to come for money outside the agriculture basket. <coughs> Simple as that. Uh, 
Okay, but the stakeholder is also the NGO. It's also the environmental people, so ask them for contribution. So, I still have a question, a reply coming from Elvestre, uh, yeah. Castillo, and then we move to the next stakeholder it's presentation. It's working, but yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, uh, just a uh, comment about the nursery system in Sao Paulo. Uh, when you are involved, when we discovered that Xylella is causing the CVC, uh, our nurse, our all the, the this nursery system are is open, okay, in the field. And that time, uh, we start to discuss about you must move to the closest system. So, and I involved in this process. Uh, we uh, select the met the the mother plants in the field. They you are do the the, the, the test that it, uh, sir that it was clean so and so introducing the system and uh, to give to 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 to, uh, to have a time to to it pro uh, to provide to the growers the uh, at least one half material and at the, the same time start to do gra uh, micro grafting to be sure that you must have the clean material okay. I, I i know that it's a, a simple way to say because you are working in only one crop Okay, it's, it's more easy. I agree with you, but uh, uh, and the, and the after uh, uh, it's a, you start in almost ninety and ninety six. We the the the, the 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 people start to discuss about the moving the system to open to close the system. So in two thousand three was mandatory. There is a time to to, to nurseries to to be adapted to uh, to do, to a new system. So and so in summer nowadays the, the we have almost two hundred thousand million of the plant citrus plant in the field, and almost ninety percent ninety ninety zero percent of the plants came from those this system closer system, and why? Because the CBC drop in the field. We are talking about when when uh, medium incidence of the uh, forty forty zero percent. 40% of the plants in the field. Nowadays, we will have almost 2% of infected plants in the field. It's one of parts of the history. Of course, that you have another uh, 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 strategy like vector control, and uh, eliminate the, the disease plants, okay. But the nursery plant, I, my, my, I, 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 I think it was one of the most important things to do to to have in a good production. Anyway, in the, the beginning, uh, in the, in the, the, is the process is started, was uh, financed by the state, okay? And nowadays, you have the, the huge production, the growers pay by tax, okay? So now Thank I will you. ask uh, um, uh, Pasquale Di Rubo from the European Commission Plant Health Unit, the GSANTE, to present the feedback from the risk manager point of view. Yes. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I would like, first of all, uh, uh, to take this opportunity to thank the French authorities and the local authorities for hosting uh, this uh, conference here in Corsica. At the same time, I would like also to take this opportunity to thank EFSA and all the partners uh, for the organization of this uh, great conference. Um, that we find always uh, very inspiring, the, the results that uh, researchers are presenting uh, during these uh, events, and that we take also with us uh, good messages back home uh, in Brussels for the policy development. Um, I was asked indeed to um, give a, a, a short presentation on the risk manager's perspective on uh, research achievements, research needs for the future, so I will not enter in the details of the policy uh, development, uh, but um, I would like to share with you some thoughts that we have been uh, collected also thanks to the anonymous contribution of some uh, risk managers in the room that I would like to thank, that we have collected together in the presentation with the help of uh, Andrea Majorano from EFSA. So as a general remarks, um, before entering in the details, uh, I think uh, I would like to appreciate on behalf of the European Commission the great achievement and contribution that Ponte 
and XF factors have done in terms of uh, policy support and uh, information and uh, details that have been used for the update and development of the EU control strategy. There has been a, a tremendous uh, work and uh, substantial developments on uh, knowledge concerning uh, pest uh, um, host uh, vectors, interactions, climatic conditions. That's indeed all this information has been the basis for uh, our risk management uh, in Brussels together with the help of member states. So in this respect, uh, we really appreciate a lot the work that uh, has been done at the achievements so far. Of course, uh, we don't forget that it's a long journey, but uh, it was certainly a good start. Um, as a last point, indeed, um, uh, is also uh, uh, important to highlight that we understand that a lot of uh, things are still ongoing and that uh, new emerging topics are also uh, on the agenda of uh, researchers. So it's important to continue a lot of uh, uh, presentations that we have seen here today, uh, a lot of activities that are uh, giving promising results. So in this respect, indeed, uh, we invite uh, you to, to continue in your uh, activities when uh, you go back home, that there are indeed uh, people interested in the outcome of your uh, activities. Um, as a feedback from uh, risk managers, um, I would like to uh, uh, just focus on the most important points as a research achievement. Uh, first of all, on the pathogen and the host plant. Indeed, uh, we have heard a lot of information about the specificities of each outbreak, of each uh, area, of each infections, so uh, a lot of information about the subspecies, uh, sequence types, and also within the same sequence type, indeed we learned that there is a lot of complexity that uh, deserves further uh, assessment, further research. But indeed, uh, from a policy perspective, uh, this uh, complexity indeed uh, brings challenges and also uh, precaution uh, when uh, defining uh, which measures we have to uh, take at EU level to preserve indeed the rest of the Union territory which is still free from this pathogen. At the same time, there are uh, uh, promising results on the resistant and tolerant varieties which are uh, giving some good hope for the future. Together with the range of host plants, uh, I see EFSA that is investing a lot of efforts to collect uh, in a uh, database, all the host plants which are found infected worldwide with uh, Xylella fastidiosa. I understand from one side uh, this is quite um, uh, worrying because the list of host plants is increasing as investigations progress. But at the same time, uh, this brings also certain uh, certainty from a regulatory point of view when uh, we have to define movement restrictions, when we have to define uh, how to move plants within the Union territory, how to also uh, regulate the import from third countries. So this is certainly a big source of information that uh, we uh, take into account when uh, defining uh, risk management at EU level. At the same time, also the role of vectors. We have heard after two years uh, new insights about the dispersal capacity of the vectors concerned by Xylella, the transmission and, and important information that indeed are helping us also uh, in the definition of control measures for this vector. Uh, it's clear uh, more and more that the focus on uh, insects is crucial in the uh, management of the disease. Indeed, I have heard that uh, a dis an infected plant may be uh, left on the ground if there are no I insect uh, vectors around. And this is indeed an important point to, uh, to, to, to focus on. At the same time, uh, also the detection and uh, identification, we have heard uh, uh, really tremendous development in this respect both in terms of uh, development of reliable and uh, quick detection methods. Uh, at, at the same, mm, in parallel, this work has uh, contributed a lot to the update of the EPO standards that we base on in, U in the EU. And we have also heard a very uh, interesting and promising result on the use of uh, new technologies for large scale monitoring. We have uh, seen uh, remote sensing, now also the satellite 
are giving a good source of information. And all these mm, details, in, indeed, in an integrated way, are uh, giving a good basis for taking decision uh, in terms of control at EU level. Lastly, on modeling, uh, yesterday we have uh, seen, and also today, uh, several uh, mm, uh, Work, uh, works on modeling, both in terms of epidemic establishment uh, with different uh, mapping exercises uh, that indeed are giving uh, a good hope uh, for uh, the future. Uh, certainly, this part needs further uh, refinement for the work. We have seen, uh, heard by the researchers that there are still uh, a lot of uh, uh, improvements that could be indeed introduced uh, in the modeling. But Certainly, there is a good and promising uh, work on that side. And uh, finally, for the first time, I would like to really uh, acknowledge uh, the concrete uh, result about the economic, uh, social, environmental impact of Xylella fastidiosa in the Union territory. Uh, we have been uh, looking uh, forward to get this information because is important when taking decisions uh, to know uh, the impact of your problem, what you have to deal with, and how big your problem is to understand how strong your measure should be. And concerning the key research needs, uh, we have uh, been thinking about uh, what could be the future um, uh, activities in terms of research and how research could proactively and also um, you know, uh, support our decisions at EU level. Uh, in terms of surveillance, uh, we find and we believe that there is still, indeed as uh, anticipated earlier, some uh, fine-tuning of the modeling uh, that might be uh, important and needed to support on-field activities. Uh, we have now, um, unfortunately, several uh, situations affected by Xylella in Europe, which are quite different from each other. We have, uh, indeed, a homogeneous landscape in Apulia with olive uh, from the south to the north of the infected zones, but this uh, territory, this kind of conformity of the landscape uh, might be different from uh, urban uh, areas or mixed uh, landscape. Uh, that we see in other countries. So this modeling might be some, f might be, mm, be further uh, refined uh, to, to support uh, on-field activities. At the same time, uh, uh, we have um, uh, heard that it's still tricky, this early detection of a low-level presence of xylella. And uh, we understand that early action is key if we want to succeed in the eradication of any outbreak at the first phase. If we arrive too late, uh, eradication becomes uh, more and more difficult, if in some cases uh, not feasible at all. So uh, if we want to still uh, preserve um, the rest of the Union territory from this uh, very dangerous pest, we want to indeed have further guidance from you, from researchers, uh, for how to detect immediately and as soon as possible uh, low-level presences of uh, the pest. In terms of uh, sampling, uh, it's indeed uh, we have heard th that if on one side the diagnostics have advanced quite a lot in terms of efficacy and sensitivity, it's also important to look in parallel about the sampling efficacy, how effective uh, we sample our uh, plant. And in this respect, uh, uh, we believe there is uh, still uh, some work to be done on how to sample symptomatic or asymptomatic plants, how the bacterium is distributing inside the plant, but not only the distribution within the host plant, but also how this distribution is changing across the years, across the, the seasons, so hot season or cold season. This is certainly an important information that we would like to know when uh, inspecting uh, the host plants to be sure that we are uh, looking for the pest and that we don't miss uh, important information. And lastly, in terms of uh, testing, um, uh, in, if on one side we have made big progress on uh, validation of diagnostic methods, uh, 
uh, there is still some uh, uh, further work and we invite the researchers to continue the validation process of new diagnostic methods, also looking at the specificities of host pathogen relation. So in that respect, uh, we indeed uh, appreciate the ongoing work and uh, um, uh, continue in that respect. Lastly, uh, on uh, three important points, because uh, we have heard that uh, eradication is uh, very difficult, in some cases impossible, but the EU policy uh, still has uh, as a major objective the eradication of the pest, where eradication indeed it can be achieved, uh, while containment remains if it remains the only objective uh, in case uh, the bacterium is established and uh, we, we recognize that uh, indeed um, uh, we cannot eradicate anymore. Uh, and in that respect, the EU has uh, uh, shown uh, uh, an enough flexibility to recognize and ha ensure also um, that uh, it's uh, important to consider when uh, we are in situation of eradication and when we are in situation of containment, it's really an important decision that we have to take based on the resources available, based on the impact of our decision on the local community and uh, on the member states and the union as a whole. So it's not a, a simple uh, choice, but we certainly uh, take this into account. In terms of eradication, indeed, it's important to continue the work on vector management uh, to find uh, solutions on uh, IPM, being chemical, being bio biological, being mechanical solutions to effectively treat uh, vectors, uh, and also how to eliminate the bacterium that we know today it, um, it's uh, not still uh, available any treatment solutions, but for eradication we want to have uh, ways to eliminate completely the bacterium. For containment, uh, the situation is slightly different. Also in this case, uh, we are uh, uh, very, um, we appreciate the development on some treatment solutions and uh, we Im really look forward about uh, new development on biological controls, uh, mechanical controls and chemical controls. Breeding technique um, is also an important point. We have uh, focused a lot on olives in uh, Puglia, and now also there are activities on almonds in, uh, in uh, Spain. But indeed, we have uh, a long list of host plants. We have uh, a EU agriculture to preserve, and so probably we have to start thinking also how to go beyond olives, beyond almonds, and beyond the most um, usual uh, host plants that we keep working on. So here we have to really do an effort to think about 2050 as the next objective to reconvert our EU agriculture to be ready to next uh, axillal outbreaks. Uh, last point on uh, communication and uh, awareness raising. I forgot probably one point on containment, indeed uh, also it was raised uh, in the previous uh, discussion, how to learn and how to live with the bacterium. Indeed, in a containment like uh, Puglia, like uh, Balearic Island, like Corsica, we have to find a way to live with the bacterium. In this respect, uh, we think that further work in terms of research is still needed to understand about new production systems what we can do as alternative to the current situation in case we don't have resistant varieties, in case we, we, we cannot uh, only think about the current host plants, probably we have to think about the new production systems. And also the effect of recombination, what does it mean in practice? And last point on communication and awareness raising that was in this, um, discussed uh, uh, before, uh, we believe that in terms of uh, research, the complexity of uh, xylella is not ending only to pest, pat the pathogen, host, and uh, vector uh, relation. Indeed, we have seen there is a much bigger complexity uh, around a problem of xylella. And in terms of communication and awareness, we believe that indeed uh, from a research point of view, uh, it would be very important to have some, um, uh, co in a coordinated way, some uh, messages and how actions, how to uh, involve uh, stakeholders, how to build up a dialogue in an open way, in a constructive way. We know that the same message that could work for farmers 
might not work for nurseries. Uh, messages need to be tailor-made. Uh, involvement indeed uh, need to be taught how um, and uh, what is really needed uh, for the specific uh, uh, interest groups, being public, general public, and so on. So in this, uh, there is indeed, uh, we see still a big problem when we visit the outbreak areas, that there is a, ris a, a big difference between the actual risk that we see from outside and the perceived risk when uh, we speak to the local communities. So how to balance indeed uh, these uh, two aspects. Uh, and in that respect, we, we would very much welcome for the research uh, from your side. I would stop here. I think this was the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. So it would be nice to still have on the screen the last slides of Pasquale Di Rugo presentation, if possible. Uh, because there was some interesting idea there. But in fact, if I reflect on what you show, here we have the need with research to find, uh, to support uh, the society understanding how to live with the problem in the area of containment, in which is now Apulia, uh, Balearic Island, uh, Corsica, how to improve, how to have the farmer grow other crops, and then we have the needs that not to move the epidemics fast to other areas because we are not definitely not ready for that. So we have a double need. We have a, something which must be very precise uh, with a lot of um, attention to the low inoculum, to the, uh, to the plants asymptomatic, uh, to the fast detection at the border of these areas. But then we need to have a, a practical solution for the area which have been already that this has already been established. Huh? So uh, then I let the floor to the, to the scientist. Uh, and maybe let's pay attention also to the last point, the communication awareness, which I think you, there are now some good examples. I was just uh, watching on internet some one month ago, and there was this meeting was on, on web, Cirella Resilience in Apulia, where you meet with the locals, you explain the problem, the solution, so I think we have already some example, but then the question there for communication, how, how can this be better done, not only from scientists, also for public authorities, how can we raise this awareness? I think um, uh, w w the I, I like the, the proposal uh, that uh, the grower uh, has to ne needs to be have uh, an active role from now on and work with the the scientists um, because now you are entering in a phase where in some areas you you, ha you have to manage the disease that means you have to find um, short term mid term s solutions and to to live with it with the problem and um, my experience uh, in Brazil is that the, the growers, uh, they, had, they had a very important role. Actually, they helped uh, the scientists to, to find uh, some uh, solutions in some cases. Or they, like uh, Rodrigo mentioned in California, they, they, they shape projects. Like they, they give uh, the, 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 the type of uh, the, the needs that they, 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 they have for that moment, for that particular problem they have in some region. So this interaction is very important. And also the growers, uh, when they get organized, they, they can also uh, implement some actions, defense actions that maybe the, the, the public or the government is not able to do um, if they are really motivated to do and, and they think it's important. Then communication and awareness is important. And finally, they, they can help, uh, they can act with the government to, to show what's important in terms of legislation that for the sector and, and also for funding some research, get, get funds to, for the science to for the applied projects. But I agree that we should never forget the long term, like the fundamental research, because this is the, uh, the, 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 the important uh, subsidy for for for, the so for long term solutions, innovative methods of control, and so on. Just on the issue of 
raising awareness and communication. So I think there are in this room people who would be better at talking about it uh, than myself, but uh, this is becoming more and more important with, uh, for national plant protection organization to have this communication and to be able to communicate and, and raise awareness. So more and more of the NPPO we see in EPO have this concern. I know that there are initiatives at the EU level um, and, and so this is really something which is coming and, and I know that, for example, the UK colleagues are here and they are doing work on communication and, and raising awareness. So, And we have next year, Giuseppe, if you allow me to make the link <laughs> to this important year. So next year will be the International Year of Plant Health. And this is also a unique opportunity for all of us. So not only the official, the people from national plant protection organizations, but all of you to take an active role in promoting what you're researching on, what, what your job, how your job is contributing to better plant health. And, and this is really important to see this opportunity next year and to be active next year about it. And everybody has a role to play there. And of course, um, if I can, uh, on the previous slide, you've mentioned sampling. I'd like to jump on that. Um, Xylella is a good example, but there are many other examples where sampling is really um, very important. And you're right when you say we look a lot at the diagnostic testing, we've improved a lot the uh, analytical sensitivity of the test we're using. It's more complicated to look at sampling, but it's very important to look at sampling. So, yeah, that would be great to have some studies on sampling. I can add just a, a small comment uh, for uh, the detection. Uh, in general, uh, um, the main uh, uh, stress is about the detection limit uh, of, uh, of the technique, so we are always looking for the most sensitive uh, uh, techniques. But uh, I believe that uh, yesterday uh, Elvesio brought an example on techniques that can be used directly by, uh, by the growers, even if it, it has not the detection li limit of the real time, but for sure it's something that uh, can help in the uh, surveillance uh, and the, uh, from the, um, uh, directly from the grower. So I wish that the regulatory agency are also open uh, to different approaches in relation to the scope of, of the detection and uh, uh, not only to be stressed by the, the most sensitive techniques that in, in some cases is not the one that can be uh, routinely applied uh, for a massive uh, control. I think in the future for surveillance, we will also have to think about the role of citizen farmers, because historically the farmers or the citizen have always been the first to spot new disease and to bring to the authority. So there will be the need in all this model for new surveillance, for this based surveillance, to integrate this input uh, from the farmer organization, from the citizen that are the first to spot the new plants with strange symptom, for example. So this is something which is also very important to consider. There is now an Fresco project starting on this. Uh, EFSA will also contribute uh, by looking how this uh, uh, citizen science can be integrated into a risk-based approach. This is not immediate, I think, but uh, uh, it's very important to remember we have satellite detection, but we also have people that going around and see the plants and. Uh, they're also quite effective. 
um, just so indeed uh, probably complement on the last point about communication because just to not to um, be uh, misunderstood uh, which on one side there is the the, the, the institutional communication that uh, we do at EU, member state, uh, regional level, everyone is indeed uh, uh, communicating in that respect. But probably from uh, a scientific point of view, uh, we would like to look more about some social sci uh, science, how indeed a complex problem could could uh, be translated uh, in uh, with uh, some clear messages that probably vector control is uh, not uh, uh, just uh, done for the sake of, the, uh, of it, but uh, it's crucial uh, on the other side to control the pest. Uh, we have seen indeed uh, that the conventional way to communicate is not uh, enough. So that's why uh, on, on, on my presentation I tried to uh, to put this point more from a scientific point of view, from a social uh, uh, dimension point of view, how to indeed uh, um, understand this complexity and how this complexity then can be translated in concrete actions at the more institutional level. So that's uh, not only a, a passive uh, communication that we indeed do on a daily basis, on, with our best tools, but probably we have to uh, think um, that uh, some additional work could be done in order to, to develop this uh, in a more uh, effective way. Yeah. So from the chair of the session, any more comment related to this uh, uh, research target that the risk manager are, uh, are asking you to take on board. Uh, okay, from the chair of the session. Um, uh, so first, uh, uh, I'm very happy to see uh, that, you know, in some situations you should just learn how to live with it. I, I think that's great. Um, I'll bring up that most of the programs that I've been involved that sort of they have been successful and it's kind of a model now for a lot of large projects in the U.S is sort of um, area-wide efforts um, or large collaborations. And uh, there is an interest in, in figuring out how to communicate uh, research results to um, stakeholders, farmers, or whoever. Um, and one of the things, so that's kind of becoming part of a component of many of these projects. And one of the ways that it's done in the US is uh, through uh, trusted actors. So these are not necessarily scientists. We tend to be horrible communicators for the most part. And um, these are people who know what the issues are. They know what the pain points are. And um, they can translate what's meaningful from the science um, to, to the stakeholders, to, to farmers, for example. Um, <coughs> so that's something that tends to be lacking. Uh, in, in, in plant pathology and entomology in particular, but other disciplines as well. Uh, and I think we have four social scientists in this room, maybe. Um, and, and, and it's an example of, 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 of that major problem. Um, so figuring out how to do this, this connection is, is great. And again, in, in, in California, we have this system where you have the people that the farmers interact with for all issues uh, from the university. And that individual interacts with the scientists. Um, so even though I can go there, give a talk once a year on something, um, the reality is that the, the, the advisor who lives, who lives in the area is there and, and can provide that information in an accessible manner whenever it's needed. Um, so I think that you know, this would depend, will vary from country to country, to from stakeholder to stakeholder. Of course, nurseries is gonna be different from, from farmers and so on but um, you need to have the sort of trusted actors, people who understand and know the science but can also translate it in an accessible way. So you're proposing to have a local ambassador in different community, a trusted person that talks about the problems. Do we have volunteers in this room? Anybody from the public who would like to add something? Thank you. Uh, Nicholas Spence from DEFRA. 
I think we've had some really interesting comments and thoughts made. Just some thoughts from me. We have a very high level of awareness of biosecurity and plant health, and particularly xylella in the UK right now. Previous experiences with ash dieback have, have really heightened awareness. So don't underestimate the power that we have to communicate those messages in terms of raising public awareness. I mean, for example, this summer, I know many European countries have been using the EPO don't risk it materials at airports, which is really challenging the public. It's a nudge strategy to say, don't bring back plants, seeds, cuttings, etc., cetera, uh, and particularly because of the risk of xylella. But I also think from the industry point of view, it's interesting to hear your thoughts and comments. There's a massive task to work with industry on risk sharing and responsibility sharing. And certainly in the UK, the mood amongst growers and uh, traders is they're very fearful of xylella because they know that they're very vulnerable, they import a lot of plants, and how can they be sure that the regulations, the passporting, the checks and controls work? And if they become the one nursery that imports it, they know it will have a massive impact. So that's actually been a catalyst for discussions, for partnership, for wanting to know about the science, wanting to know about how do we better regulate uh, plants and trade so that we can all be sure that we're not going to be spreading xylella. So I think, particularly in International Year of Plant Health next year, I would encourage you all to think about how can you communicate your science uh, and work closely with industry and risk managers so that we can all really use the science to have much better impact to engage with the public and industry so that we've got better biosecurity and better supply chains throughout Europe and globally. Thank you. Thank you. Then it was Steve Lindo wanted to say something and then we may reply. So I, I have a bit of a specific comment after having heard a lot of talks over this week about risk management and especially how it would fit in with the EU programs. Um, we've heard many different presentations about genomes. We've got hundreds and hundreds of genomes now. Uh, and yet, the big question really seems to be, what can we learn from all those genomes? And I think there's a real big opportunity here, especially with the, the, the strategy that EU has these very large uh, multi-participant projects to collaborate in what I would think would be a very valuable uh, activity, which would be to portion out the large number of different hosts that you have in Europe and find out which of all these different strains attack all those different hosts? I think you need to put functions to these genomes. You've got great sequences, but with that functional information about that, and I think one of the more important functions that you might be able to get at with that kind of strategy would be to do the non-sexy work, spread it out amongst many participants, and start to make, I think, real progress in terms of understanding the likelihood that new uh, Nursery material, new species coming in are likely to be a, a risk you should keep an eye on. We've heard a lot about recombination. There's a lot of evidence that xylella isn't a thing, it's a evolving thing. And I think you could probably get a much better handle on future risks and current problems that you could link to a lot of investments you've already made in all the sequencing. Thank you. And we uh, take one last question from this side. It was already. Yeah and then we, we reply. It's okay? Yeah. The very last one. The very last one. <laughs> so uh, just a few words from uh, Corsica. Yes, uh, uh, with Gdislela, we, we learned a lot of things. Uh, we, first, we learned that uh, uh, sampling plants was awful. It was terrible because one, one day a plant was symptomatic, so we, you, you can think that it could be uh, a, uh, possible to, to find uh, the, the bacteria. And uh, you pass uh, three, three months uh, later and uh, there is no more symptoms. There is nothing. And it was uh, very complicated with Maria. And yes, we, we, we made kilometers for having <laughs> some hope to find uh, the positive and the still positive when he was negative. 
So we learn the resilience of the plants, the great resilience of the plants in the, in the, in the, in the, in the orchards, uh, as well as uh, in the, 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 the environment. So uh, another type of uh, uh, learning was about the vectors. According to the fact that uh, Xylella is a vectorial disease, uh, in fact, uh, the strategy uh, was to, to find the bacteria directly in the mouth of, uh, of, the, of the vectors. And it was very much uh, 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 efficient according to the fact to find into the plant. In, in, the, in, the, in the mouth of the, of the vectors, it was easier to find the bacteria even when there was no symptom at all. No, no observable uh, plant uh, showing some symptoms. And we knew that the bacteria was diffusing there even th there is no, uh, no real outbreak, no declared outbreak. So it was complicated. And uh, uh, another thing we, 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 we learned is to, uh, uh, to think about the interaction and the imbrication between uh, cultivated area with natural area. Especially in our island, this imbrication is very, very important for, for those that pa are participating to the field trip. We, we, can, we can show this to, uh, tomorrow. And uh, uh, this is uh, opening another kind of uh, reflection about uh, uh, the way to go to a more sustainable agriculture uh, using as a pathway the possible uh, agroecology project. Uh, obviously, in a containment area, we know that it's impossible to eradicate. Uh, I'm afraid that eradicate in other parts, it's, <laughs> it's still not a, a not realistic project in my point of view, but we can, we can have a discussion about that. But obviously, er eradication uh, uh, in our uh, situation, it's impossible. So we, we must uh, live with, as you said, and it's very important for us. But uh, containment should not be a status. It should be a strategy. It should become a real possibility for growers, for all the actors, uh, also for uh, environment, to make sure that these bacteria uh, not, uh, uh, are not causing uh, huge damages. We, we, we must find solutions for reducing the post potential damages that we can, we can uh, have in, in our island. And this uh, can uh, open new ways of uh, 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 researches, not only, uh, not only trying to, uh, find, uh, to fight against the bacteria, but to find the, the right way for the people to live with. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here we come back to the issue that we need research for the containment area, we need research for live the disease, and we need a different research for uh, preventing the spread because we have seen impact prediction. What is the difference if the spread is very fast and what if the spread is lower? But uh, this is really key issue to how to, to build the research to uh, live with the bacteria in the containment area. I would like to ask uh, Blanca Landa to give the last reply from the panel of the chairs. Talking before, and then uh, we will leave the floor to the final conclusion of the session of the conference, which will be presented by uh, Claude Ragard. Uh, that he was not with us; that he was there finalizing everything. <laughs> and uh, before we leave, I will say something about field trip for tomorrow. But now I let the last floor, the last okay. word to Blanca Land. Yeah, I would like to say uh, I completely agree with all the research needs that that were written there. This is more a wish list. Um, all the scientists that are involved in the different projects dealing with Silela, we have in mind that we need to continue and move forward on, on this research. But for that, we need money, we need time. So maybe the risk managers or the policymakers can try to push uh, 
to make an effort uh, to, to push the different countries, the different governments to invest in, in, in this problem. I'm really jealous and I'm happy for the British College that they don't have the problem and they knew that they have to, to, to put money to, to prevent the entrance of Silela. And this is the way to work. So we are ready to, to continue working. I'm sure that I will probably retire with this pathos system, but uh, we need help. So if you want answer, uh, uh, we are prone to, to, to work, work hard. I think in three, four years, we have been able to answer many, many questions that uh, even before, um, two years ago, we even think about the, the, the problem that we will face, but for that we need also help, and we are ready for that. Now I ask Claude Bragard to come to the podium to give the presentation. Actually, we could stay, we are sitting, so while you talk, <laughs> so we don't move too much. And uh, if uh, there is a slide that can be shown on the screen about the field trip, uh, it's possible? Okay, it's here. Yeah, yeah. okay. So. so maybe important information for all those participating f to the field trip tomorrow morning. Meeting point is at 7.45 a.m. at the Ajaccio bus station. So read this carefully. I think you can get the information at uh, the information desk also. Okay? The field trip was open to everyone, but was for, you need to book. So if we didn't book in advance, uh, well, you may try to talk with Letizia Ugois here if there is still some place available, but don't come tomorrow morning 7.45 <laughs> ready with your uh, bag. And if you're going to the airport, bring your suit, in, uh, your luggage with you. It can be brought to the, the bus. Okay, so we may shift to the conclusions. And I will start by saying, wow. You know, when I did accept to deliver these conclusions, I was not expecting to be in this position because it's quite tricky to follow the session we have had. And this session could have been the concluding session. Uh, this is really a challenge. I, I would like also to stress that my name is there on the title, but organizing a conference like this, and this is quite an unusual, an unusual conference, it's a collective work, and I would like to thank all the people who did really contribute to this organization. And it's a lot of people, a lot of people who work at the backstage, you don't see them. You have a lot of people here in the front that did contribute also. I would like to stress this very much. This is not my conclusions, this is a collective work. Just a reminder, I, I showed already this. We have had the workshop in Brussels on Xylela. We have had the conference organized in Palma de Mallorca in 2017, and now we have had Ajaccio 2019. Thank you very much, Corsica. Thank you very much, France, uh, for welcoming us. Don't forget the field trip tomorrow. It will be nice to go there. It was nice. 350 participants, 41 nationalities, 55 presentations, 115 posters were delivered. I would like to thank all the organizations that contributed, EFSA, Eufresco, ANSES, INRA, uh, of course, uh, the Office of, of Environment, of course, SICA, uh, the Conservatoire Botanique de Corse, all the projects, a lot of what was discussed about Ponte, which is ending now. We have XF factors continuing. I think they have a meeting in this room later on today. QRXF, Euroxant. Thanks also very much to the scientific committee. We have had nine web meetings to prepare, reviewing uh, the proposed communications, designing the program. You have all them listed there, Astrid Cruo, Alice Del Bianco, Michele Abruzzo, Maria Nelchak, Leticia Hugo, Francoise Poliakov, Maria Passaponari, Donato Boscia, Balti Serra Giovanni, Ralph Köpnik, Maroun El Mujaber, Giuseppe Stancanelli, and Antonio Vicente. Thank you very much. Thanks also to EFSA Corsair for the support uh, in the organization of this event, EFSA communication also, a lot of Twitter have been already delivered. This was very nice. We have also an organizing committee. Maybe I will not list all the people on this list, if you accept, we are late, 
But again, I, I would like to stress all the organizations behind these people. Thank you very much also. Thank you to all of you, because without your participation, such a conference would be impossible. And I would like to stress the quality of the presentations that we have received. It was really great presentations and excellent. And, and I would like just to mention what was, was mentioned by the stakeholders. These presentations were understandable even for people who are not in the field, and that's great, that's important. I would like to stress that we, we would like to receive your feedback on the conference. You will receive an email, and you are able to provide us with ideas and ways to improve the way we organize this type of conference. It's very important for us to get this feedback. Please answer to this. What I will de deliver now will a little bit overlap the last session, so I will try to be quick, but we have had the support of rapporteur, which are listed, listed here, um, mostly from uh, EFSA, which did really uh, provide reports on the sessions. We have had supports for the stakeholders by Sibren, Andrea, Sarah, and, and the Twitter support by Sarah, it's also important. And the chairs, you have all them in front of you. Uh, it's really uh, a pleasure to work with such a team because I did ask them to provide me with some ideas about their, se their sessions and they provided me with such an outcome and we will have this uh, quickly. First session or uh, topic, biology and pathogenicity. We have mentioned uh, impressive progress in comparative genomics, uh, quoted more than 350 draft genomes available, more to come probably. We have had some efforts in dating some of the EU introductions, uh, also clarifying uh, the different outbreaks which rely on independent introductions, clarification of uh, complex taxonomy is ongoing, and of course we stress the importance of recombination and, and the debate about it. There is significant progress in the understanding of resistance in olive, uh, presence of conserved traits with grapevine and citrus, but still to be done. We need more in-depth studies to understand what is behind these genomes, and this was stressed by Steve Lindo just, just uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, we have to understand what is behind the host range, the pathogenicity of a given strain. We have had also uh, an approach to look at uh, the way we, we, we look at the, the different uh, multiple lineage we are dealing with, with STs, and, and the question about the tool. We may use VNTR also as an alternative. And uh, we spot that there are differences between each outbreak and infected area, and, and this fosters the need for targeted research program and measures. Concerning the vectors, we have consider considerable gain in knowledge of vector biology in connection with the role of Pilenus tumarius and other xylem feeders in the epidemiology of Xylella fastidiosa in EU. Emerging ideas on how to interfere with the vector and methodological progress, approach for enabling the insect trophic network, DNA barcoding for typing the insects, focus on dispersal activity, uh, flying mills data, release recapture experiments, range of spread. But it should be stressed that, of course, all these informations are very important and critical for surveillance and risk, risk management strategies, also for uh, IPM in containment areas, but a lot of these data are still, I would say, on the preliminary phase, so they, they need to be uh, confirmed and, and looked at again, and uh, probably uh, uh, some ongoing experiments are, are still uh, to be done. Detection, uh, the research is not only on molecular tests for lab application, but also on site techniques, uh, which are emerging, also to be used by growers. We have a uh, new real-time PCR developed for subspecies and, and direct identification in the plant material, which is quicker and cheaper also. We have advances in both plant and vector testing. And of course, uh, the sampling remains a, a strategic issue and still maybe also to be stressed, the fact that uh, this detection is not only in the lab, but should also uh, be envisaged from the sampling to, uh, at, at the field to the lab. For the ecology epidemiology modeling, 
again, significant amount of knowledge uh, elaborated on the biology and uh, knowledge of the ecology of Xylella fastidiosa and associated vectors. Very nice predictive models for large scales and regional pathogen dispersal and distribution. And during these sessions, uh, participants were able to elaborate a wish list to improve the accuracy and the, the precision of the models and the research in this field. And you have these listed here, transmission rate between vector and host sample insects in combination to positive findings, data on long range spread as traffic, hitchhiking on lorries, more information on subspecies, monitoring for uh, modeling improvements, and stressing the need for more epidemiological field studies with uh, holistic approaches, pathogen, disease, cultivar, crop vectors, agronomical practices. When we come to risk and impact assessment, use of satellite data to infer extent of the impact of Puglia in Puglia, and from ground zero, I just uh, repeat what was said, uh, huge uh, area affected uh, millions of olive trees. Uh, of course, interest of the modeling approach uh, to infer the risk, um, impact estimates at the billion scales. This, is this impact is of course unacceptable and uh, interesting contribution on the socio-patho system in both Corsica and Puglia uh, broadening the views in terms of understanding and improving the communication with the stakeholders. This allows me to stress the need for transparency and improved communication on the topic, and also the discussion on the cost of surveillance and prevention, which is much less than the impact if the disease is, uh, spreads. Concerning surveillance, very nice progress in the teledetection, homogeneous cultivated area, uh, mostly, importance of the asymptomatic periods, interest in the vector testing, pest surveillance cards, EFSA toolkit is available, and uh, we see really an improved link in between the research and the surveillance schemes. We have also uh, the question which was triggered by Giuseppe about the possibility of integration of all the different approaches and the question of the cost of control, how to incorporate this. But again, the reply that envisaged surveillance is all often cheaper than other measures. We have had a session on sustainable control measures, and, and maybe we have to stress that control is, is at first an integrated, uh, an integrated approach dealing with the pathos system in the, and, and the better understanding of this part of system helps the control. We have had presentations. The, vol the voluntary system preventing pest in nurseries was presented. We have had presentation on an acetyl acetylcysteine, potential use of DSF or analogs, biological controls, the, phyto the, the phytobiome or microbiome, parabur colderia phytoferments, and the plant resistance, of course, uh, with the presentation on uh, diversity of reactions with olive cultivars, need for field test testing, and uh, strategies for insect vector population controls. And maybe uh, something to remind you is, of course, that the development of such efficient measures takes time, and there is a need probably for prioritization of resources for the long-term work. So where are we now? Well, we have had this uh, final session with uh, Copa Cogeca, European Nursery Stock Association, European Commission, DG Sante. And uh, I just grabbed some of the comments we have had during the session from Copa Cogeca, maybe uh, the idea and, and uh, the need for combined and integrated, integrated actions, the need to involve the farmers, target the end users in a more direct way, bottom-up approach, and uh, the fact that uh, Copa Cogeca stressed the richness and the diversity of the scientific expertise present, uh, the clarity in the communications we have had and the hope which is there. The European Nursery Stock Association, it was interesting to have this comment on emotions and feelings, faith and hope, promises. Also some comments like on latency, time bomb, uh, attention to the environment and uh, a demand for help uh, for, for providing uh, 
uh, support, especially uh, looking at sustainable control measures. We have had an interesting uh, uh, development by uh, Pasquale and, and the European Commission on the research priorities. I was a little bit short on this because it was the end. Uh, so we have had uh, these emerging topics on prevention, early detection control achievements so far, and, and we, we were able to, li to view a list of uh, uh, the demands and the, the expectations, I would say, from the risk manager's uh, perspectives. So this brings me to the end, and maybe some key messages we may uh, keep with us. We have had an, a very active participation to the conference, and this demonstrates the high intensity of research activity in EU. Um, this is nice. The, the networking in science is, is working, and, and I would like to stress that we have here on the table a lot of people who did travel some, sometimes from very far away. And in 2013 or 2014, when we were in, the, in this, facing this issue, this major problem, and this was reminded by, by Rodrigo Krugner, we, we asked colleagues in the States, in Brazil, uh, what is your feeling? Could you help? And we received this, and I think this is important. And these colleagues, they are all also present, not maybe all, but a lot of them are present in this uh, conference, and I would like to thank them for, the, for this and for, for the, the help and the support they provided to the research in EU. It's, it's very important. I would like also to stress that uh, uh, the research in EU funded quite large projects, and we have had Ponte who delivered uh, a lot of com communication through the conference, uh, XF factors. These large projects, they help in, in bringing together research and, uh, and, and scientists around the table. It's, it's, this is really important. So the, the networking is working. We must keep this. Maybe we should intensify the involvement of young researchers. This is the future. This is the creativity in research, and, and this is maybe important. We, sh we have to think of this. We have had a communication by the stakeholders. We could go far uh, beyond what we did on this uh, issue. And also, there is the issue of connection with the uh, social sciences. This is also important for us. Of course, we have had impressive communications. We see uh, there is progress, yet the road is still very, very long. And uh, the more we know, the more we see the way we have to go. So there are some key issues, some gaps that have been spotted and need to be addressed. I, I just listed a few over there, but there are quite a lot. We will have to digest all of this. I would like to also, also to stress the high expectations, and, and these are, of course, related to the impact of, of Xylella in the EU. Um, we have had dramatic data delivered on the impact of olive or charts. Uh, this is really uh, Im impressive. And in this case, maybe also, and we have to, to look at what we are doing, is, is our approach, which is research-based, efficient enough? Um, do we need, uh, my feeling is that we need both an in-depth research on, on the biology of xylella fastidiosa and the vectors, but we need also a long-term uh, approach, uh, both at the field and applied science, and, and, and find the right balance. And this was touched a little bit in the debate we have had at the end. We have to figure, on, um, to, to figure out uh, how to go for this, and this is a key question, I think. And I would like to, to end by uh, just these few words, stay optimistic. And, and good work and good job, because uh, there is a lot of expectations for what you do as researchers. And that's mostly it. So just uh, in terms of communication, we mentioned we are on a nice track with plant health. Uh, 2020 is the International Year of Plant Health, and this is maybe a way just to trigger communication on these issues. Thank you very much, all of you.